name is Kari Thorsen. Um, I work in uh, Nora's uh, mouthful um, department um, of, I can hardly say it myself, but it's uh, economic development, energy, uh, gender and governance. Uh, this is uh, quite a new department um, uh, that was uh, formed uh, this summer. And uh, before this, I worked in uh, Norad's energy department, uh, where uh, this initiative of gender mainstreaming uh, the, uh, the uh, energy sector uh, development corporation started. Um, I'm just going to say uh, some few words about why Norad is uh, doing this work, how we are doing it, what we have done so far, and a few challenges and thoughts. Um, Norway has quite a few policy documents uh, committing us to gender mainstreaming uh, the energy sector in development cooperation. Um, we have uh, two white papers and we have an action plan for women's rights and gender equality in development cooperation that I'm going to talk more about. Uh, that was um, uh, from 2007, and that is still working. Now, even though we have uh, quite um, heavily commitments on, on gender mainstreaming and have had that since 2007, uh, not much has happened up until uh, 2010. Uh, we had a midterm review of the, of the action plan in 2009 that documents that there is a great lack of sex desegregated baseline data, lack of gender issues in the result frameworks of our programs, and that gender issues therefore are seldom addressed, and that there seems to be a great challenge to translate good practices into concrete actions. Therefore, um, in, uh, in, uh, in mid-2010, uh, with the uh, um, initiative from, from, from my, my director in the energy department, uh, we decided that we needed assistance. So we entered into a three-year frame agreement with Energia. And uh, basically, uh, it is after that that things have started to happen in NORAD uh, when it comes to this issue. Uh, we, uh, we entered into the frame agreement uh, and, and have requested assistance from Energia to assist us in gender mainstreaming two energy programs that we have um, in the energy sector. Uh, basically, it is then the Oil for Development uh, program that Dorothy talked about yesterday, and it is the Clean Energy program. I'll give you just um, uh, uh, a few words again on, on the Oil for Development program. Um, I think Dorothy gave a very good presentation of it yesterday and I just want to highlight um, uh, the, 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 the focus of the program which is a very, it's a very technical capacity building program in the upstream petroleum activity sector as Dorothy very clearly stated. Um, the goal is economically, environmentally and socially responsible management of petroleum resources and its main focus is on capacity building of state institutions to develop policies and regulations in three pillars, that is the resource management, financial management, and environmental management. Uh, this is uh, basically built on, on the Norwegian experience of, of how we uh, govern our petroleum resources. There is also capacity building of, of the civil society in their, their role as a, as a watchdog, uh, relating to uh, the accountability and transparency of the government take and also on environmental sustainability of uh, petroleum developments. So again, the oil for development, is a, it's, it's basically capacity building, it's, it's a capacity building of, of government institutions and it is in the upstream uh, sector uh, where there is actually quite few end users to see. and. Uh, and it's a very technical sector. Uh, we have struggled to find the right entry points uh, in oil for development program, uh, but I will come back to that. 
the Clean Energy Program is um, a much broader program. Uh, it is also um, uh, basically capacity building, uh, but it is also access to and use of renewable energy services and products. Uh, the main goal of this program, um, which actually consists of a lot of projects, so it's not as um, program specific as the Oil for Development program, but the main goal is access to a productive use of clean energy at an affordable price, basically. Um, again, its, it's, it's focus is on capacity building of state institutions uh, in developing uh, national legal frameworks and planning, but also on financing and developing, uh, development of large-scale um, power generation, transmission, distrib uh, distribution lines and, and infrastructure, but also sustainable and healthy energy services and energy efficient technology. Um, so kind of both large-scale uh, hydro developments as well as, as, as more products and, and, and more small-scale um, energy efficient uh, services. Um, it is also focusing on local employment and the productive use of energy. We have, we have uh, worked hard to uh, find the right gender entry points into these two uh, initiatives. Um, mostly, it, uh, people talk about the employment issue in the sector uh, when it comes to the energy sector. Uh, and that is, of course, uh, an important one. And um, as I had a line on my first slide, uh, during the launch of the World Development Report in Oslo uh, just a, a few weeks ago, uh, the, the Development Minister of Norway said that you know um, gender equality and uh, and the women in the workforce has been more important for Norwegian economic development than the oil. Whether this is true or not, uh, I'm not going to argue here, but. But it really highlights uh, what has been very important in, in, in Norway in, in, uh, in um, women's, um, women's liberation movement has been uh, women in the workforce. And this, uh, this, we believe, is also important in the energy sector. And, and, and to be honest, you know, it, it, we have the same uh, um, problems in Norway, uh, women are still choosing very traditionally, and we, we are struggling getting enough women into the energy sector in the workforce. So this is a global problem. It's, it's not uh, basically a South problem. Uh, we see that there are, there are, there are um, our, our kind of uh, entry to, to the gender issues um, have developed to become more um, issues as part of the socioeconomic impacts. And, and a lack of, of focus on, on socioeconomic impacts um, makes it difficult to find the, the right gender entry points. Um, there, are, there are two, uh, two impacts, uh, socioeconomic impacts, uh, that are basically more or less the same for both large hydro uh, developments as well as, as petroleum developments. And that is, uh, first of all, the, the impact on women and men in local communities from large-scale infrastructure development uh, that Dorothy was talking <coughs> lots about yesterday. And also impacts on women and men in local communities from pollution, waste and accidents. Um, we also have uh, um, uh, imp impacts relating to access uh, to economic opportunities for men and women that are, are both relating to, to clean energy developments as well as to uh, petroleum developments. Um, the Clean Energy Program uh, has, has a, a specific um, uh, gender entry point when it comes to the, the access to and the use of clean energy services and technologies. Uh, and, the, and the Oil for Development program has um, a specific entry point when it comes to transparency and accountability of the public expenditure and revenues in the petroleum sector. 
Now, how uh, does NORAD work in this? Um, we are a development agency. Our role is basically uh, to advise uh, our foreign ministry and the embassies in development cooperation and to uh, communicate results and, uh, and, and best practice and experiences and also to be a quality insurer. We have um, realized and, and uh, have known this from the beginning uh, that NORAD's gender advisor cannot mainstream uh, gender into the energy sector. This we can do uh, only together with the energy advisors as well as with the embassies and their partners. So um, uh, a strong message from us uh, was when, when our energy director uh, put, uh, took on this initiative and, and uh, the, the, the integration of gender started within the energy department itself. Um, now, uh, we also cannot do this uh, on our own. Uh, I am not from the sector of energy and I'm not a gender specialist. I'm a social scientist that has worked in NORAD for, for 15 years and I've uh, worked with development cooperation, but it has taken me serious time and uh, effort to really understand the issues in this sector. And without the assistance of Energia, we have, I would not have been here today and I have, would have nothing to talk about. Um, now, so thank you. I'm an example of how someone can be capacity built in this area. <laughs> we also do not do anything uh, without uh, it being coming as a request from our embassies. Uh, and I think that is, a, a, is crucial. We have to have the interest and the, um, the focus and the engagement and the capacity uh, in the embassy uh, for taking on this work. And, uh, uh, we respond to requests from the embassy and their partners. Sometimes they have uh, a request from their um, uh, uh, national partners and sometimes they do not. Uh, definitely the, 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 the best um, uh, starting point is when there is a request from the partners. We also work uh, only uh, into uh, country-wise uh, uh, projects and programs. That is why I'm talking so much about the Clean Energy Initiative as well as the Old for Development. And we do believe that if we are going to see any results, we have to have the, uh, uh, the, the issues uh, integrated into the programs. Uh, we are also uh, working to, to join efforts with, with other, other partners uh, and, and donors and um, uh, we have been working with the World Development Report, we have with, with, the, with the World Bank and we are also looking at other partners on country level. We realized when we started this that we needed um, to work systematically uh, with this in order to actually uh, see results uh, of our work. So we have decided to develop action plans uh, for how to uh, mainstream gender in oil for development and clean energy. And these are now, we have worked with them for a year, and they are now almost there to be, to be approved. And um, the, the basic content of, of these action plans is, is that we have uh, criteria for, for, for priority countries where we want to work in, in clean energy as well as in oil for development. We have a priority entry points for, for gender and mainstreaming in these programs. And we have a, a, a suggested a framework for, for how to measure how well we are doing this. Sorry, Kari. Yes. Two. Yeah. I'm how much do I have? One more minute. One more minute. <laughs> okay. I keep doing this. Um, okay. I just want to say very quickly that what we have done so far is that we have had a, a workshop with the Norwegian Water and Energy Directorate. We have developed a background paper for the World Development Report. We have also uh, developed an um, Energy for All conference report that is also on our web pages. Um, and we have started work in, uh, in, on, on country-specific programs. 
This is basically uh, Mozambique uh, is, a, is a big country that we are working in and we are currently uh, at a stage we have developed a baseline uh, and we have de um, developed a draft um, action plan action program actually for the two for the two programs in Mozambique that is currently now being discussed with uh, the, the, the national partners in Mozambique. We have started in Uganda and I'm looking forward to, to listening to uh, our colleague from, from Rea in Uganda to see what they have actually been doing there. And we have started in Timor-Leste and Liberia. And basically we have an increase in requests for assistance. Um, uh, Uganda is coming up also again with, with a request for assistance in both oil for development as well as clean energy. Nepal and Ethiopia are coming up with the request for assistance in the clean energy portfolio and we are following up the work in Mozambique, Liberia, Timor-Leste and Uganda. Um, I just wanted to say very um, quickly that, that uh, it has actually been uh, uh, a challenge to, to find the right entry points uh, into, into oil for development and clean energy and that we need to um, work systematically and, and uh, with resources uh, to actually manage to do this work. Um, um, and and um, we have kind of found that the, the socio-economic impact is, is a, there is a lack of focus on it in, in our programs. We, uh, they are very technical and, and we need to shift this focus. And also there has been a challenge to move from analysis to action, you know, where we actually can follow up the analysis that we do and are there after the action plans have been suggested with capacity building, advice and, and backstopping during the implementation um, period. And this, this, uh, this demands uh, a long-term uh, commitment from, from uh, our agency and also that we have uh, the external capacity uh, from our consultants to actually assist us in this, because this cannot be done by, by myself on my own. I have a few thoughts in the end that I'm not going to go into, they can just hang there. I think your presentation will be made available at all and in the end, there's. Um... You're welcome to go and talk to Carrie. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you.